discussion on computer networks and internet protocol and as uh, last um, couple of uh, or last few uh, lectures we are discussing with layer 2 phenomena. So, uh, we what we uh, what I thought that today we will discuss a overview of WLAN or wireless LAN. Though as uh, many of you understand that uh, wireless LAN or WLAN is a uh, topic itself, it is a separate course if not more than one course itself and it has different uh, consideration uh, to be handled at the specially at the physical and uh, layer 2 or the MAC layer uh, or uh, data link layer right. So, at the layer 2 and layer 1 there are separate considerations uh, for enabling the wireless and the rest of the things are uh, may not be affected that much or are not affected that uh, that way. So, uh, so that is why wireless LAN is a separate consideration, but, uh, but nevertheless uh, what we thought that uh, a basic overview of the of this uh, wireless LAN or WLAN at uh, phenomena at uh, data link layer uh, and also vis a vis uh, little bit of physical layer may be uh, good for the Mm, overall for the overall code structure and specially uh, those who are not uh, uh, exposed to this uh, uh, technologies or this uh, particular wireless and phenomena will be it will be helpful for that right. With this motivation we will be having a basic overview of wireless LAN phenomena at the layer 2 level right. So, uh, as we see that WLANs uh, especially due to huge proliferation of our uh, different uh, mobile devices and OVS and uh, mobile applications on those devices. So, there is a need for a omnipresent network to be there right. So, rather the if you if we look at that uh, bandwidth uh, availability with uh, in in a wireless LAN network or data network but so to say our mobile uh, devices it is uh, it is increasing uh, day by day right and with uh, technologies like 4G and 5G uh, trying to become operational and it becomes a different ball game uh, to handle those scenarios right. So, not only that uh, with uh, easy availability of this uh, bandwidth at a lower cost, uh, it also makes it more uh, feasible to have a, a infrastructure with wireless LAN right. Even we uh, we are these days having uh, a lab starting fully uh, working fully on wireless right, what, what you require is only the power to power the systems. Uh, the network configuration is wireless and it also is helping in uh, uh, reducing this uh, overall cable infrastructure and management of the passive cables and type of things right. So, it is it is becoming a uh, de facto standard for operations and type of things. So, uh, likewise if you if we want to in, uh, interoperate with wireless uh, similarly IEEE 802 uh, standards come into play and if we look at that uh, different set of uh, uh, IEEE 802 standards it is not only wireless. So, specifically if you see 802.11 is the wireless LAN working group right. So, there is 802.15 wireless personal Y PAN group and so and so forth. So, there are uh, if you if you see so there are a lot of uh, um, activities on the standardization point of view also right. And to be uh, very specific, so these are from that uh, 802 standardization committees uh, recommendation and their documents. And if we look at the 802 standard per se you see we see a series of uh, development came into play right. So, 802.11a wireless network uh, BRR operating at 5 gigahertz ISM band up to 54 Mbps, uh, 11 E quality of service and prioritization, 11 A handover wireless network BRR operating at 2.5 gigahertz ISM data rates up to 54 Mbps G and so and so forth right. Uh, and uh, there are different uh, standards which came up though uh, 
uh, popular are A, B, G and N became more uh, popular for uh, practical deployment and type of things. So, what we try to look at what we see that there is a lot of effort from the uh, from the standardization uh, which uh, obviously, there is based on the demand of, of this type of deployment. Now, if we see that uh, wireless uh, LAN uh, the types of broad categories of wireless LAN. So, one is something base station batch right all communication through access point right. So, uh, it is a base station based. So, you have a access point and communicate infrastructure wireless base station is connected to the wired backbone right. So, it is a uh, more of a thing it is a wired, wired backbone and then infra then base stations are connection these are more controlled because I have that major control over the wire backbone between the segments and etcetera. And uh, management is uh, much uh, better and so and so forth. There is a ad hoc uh, connections where there is no uh, per se there is no central AP sort of thing, but there is a connection which is uh, ad hoc and uh, there is uh, manates right mobile ad hoc network. So, ad hoc network again on the movement and there are different variants of different types of networks which are uh, coming up or is uh, of these like one may be the vanet vehicular ad hoc network the network where the uh, where the vehicles communicate each other in the things. Uh, so, so it says that there are diff these are major categories of the network which uh, where this uh, wireless prolification is there. Now, uh, so to specifically one with the base station which a wired backbone another is the ad hoc may be the broad thing uh, type of uh, configurations what we are uh, looking for. And uh, if we uh, look at that uh, from uh, other perspective, so there is a concept of BSS basic service set. Where, uh, where within that particular uh, basic service set the stations can be there they communicate with each other either uh, on a ad hoc basis without any access point or there is access point uh, within the basic service set right. And there is a concept of extended service set where uh, the service set is extended to the other uh, BSS through some access points. So, extended services. So, there are basic services to access point uh, they are extend uh, they are into uh, into different BSS. So, there can be different uh, the stations this uh, particular stations can be different type one is it can be stationary that in other sense it is within the BSS only other is there may be movement of the things that is one BSS to another inside uh, to another BSS. So, there can be movement from one BSS to another BSS or there can be ESS type of things right. So, move from one extended service to another. So, usually what happened these APs are connected on a distributed uh, on a backbone which is a distribution systems which in turn connected to a server or gateway which allows it to different type of services starting from different network level services right. So, this is this is the typical structure which make more practical and sense that I have BSS different BSSs they are APs. APs as a backbone uh, where we say distribution systems and go on uh, other things. So, this is the extended service set and uh, there can be movement within the BSS within two BSS under the one ESS or across ESS one ESS to another. So, these are all those things are possible, but however, 802.11 does not guarantee that communication is continuous during the move right. So, the protocol does not guarantee. Uh, that is the uh, that you the communication will be faithful uh, during the overall movement. And if we look at the physical and data link layer structure uh, of the uh, of the whole uh, stack. Uh, so, it is this uh, there are uh, that at the at the bottom line there are several uh, physical layer standards over there there is a distributed coordinated uh, coordination function or DCF over that the point coordination function or PCF and there is a there are issues of contents and free service contents and services and over over and above there are 802.1 that is the LLC sub layer. So, we have 
this sort of structure for the for the uh, valleys or w lan or more specifically 802.11 standard above this are uh, network transport etc that remains uh, same right that that the whatever the standards uh, or ip and other things wherever is working is uh, is working as in a uh, seamless fashion so that the that the bottom lines are uh, considered so if you just go little look at little quickly at the different wireless physical layer consideration so physical layer conforms to osi so there are 8 not uh, dot 11 infrared f hss uh, dhss 802.11 a ofdm and 802.11 b hr dsss and 802.11 g ofdm so these are the different things so 802.11 infrared uh, two capacities 1 mbps or 2 mbps typically range from 10 to 20 meters and cannot penetrate wall right so infrared cannot penetrate uh, typical wall and does not work outdoors but it's it's it can communicate with a low range thing right and 802.11 fhs uh, fhss frequency hopping spread spectrum again a physical layer consideration we'll see some of the aspects of physical layer but may not uh, in in our subsequent lecture but we may not go deep into the physical layer uh, consideration these are more communication oriented phenomena so this is a multi path fading 89 79 non overlapping channels and so on and so forth uh, and uh, these are different characteristics of that. So, 802.11 d triple s that direct sequence spread spectrum. So, spread signal over entire spectrum using pseudo random sequence and uh, here the bandwidth uh, achieved is one, one or two mbps. 802.11 a OFDM orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So, compatible with uh, some uh, European hyperland 2. Uh, can go for up to 54 mbps uh, with wider 5.5 gigahertz and there are uh, this uh, um, these are different consideration into the uh, thing. Then we have a variant of 802.11b though there are incompatibility between 11a and 11b up to up to 11 mbps for 2.4 gigahertz and with 11 million chips per second the bandwidth of all these protocols have deals with interference from the several other home appliances right uh, like uh, microwave ovens etc etc so uh, 11b range is much higher than the 11a so it can communicate to a higher range then we have 11 uh, 802.11g orthogonal frequency division multiplexing uh, it is backward compatible with uh, 802.11b that is why in several devices you see that 802.11b slash g uh, up to 54 mbps uses 2.4 gigahertz frequency for greater range. So, these are some of this physical consideration this is primarily to have a idea that what is what is at the uh, what are the technologies or what are the standards at the at the physical level. So, uh, if we uh, again come back to this uh, 802.11 MAC layer MAC sub layer protocol. So, uh, that it is a uh, it is a uh, uh, it is not uh, which we have a problem of this uh, having this sizing the channel which is not uh, in the 803 that wad network we will see that some of the things two major problem which comes up here is the hidden terminal problem and exposed terminal problem we will see that this is that uh, the season channel problem will not come in uh, in a wired network where things are not like this. So, to deal these two problems 802.11 uh, supports two operations one is DCF or distributed coordinated function and PCF point coordination function. So, these are the two things which are supported by 802.11 right. So, implementation of the PCF is optional, but DCF is uh, is there it is uh, all implemented and support DCF right and other PCF is much more complicated to uh, handle also. So, what is this uh, hidden station and exposed station problem well uh, presented in several literatures and uh, internet resources. So, this is a uh, hidden station problem on the A figure 
A and figure B is the exposed station. A wants to send to B, but cannot hear that B is busy, right? So it is a uh, hidden station problem that a range of C radio is not up to the A. But here B wants to send to C, but uh, mistakenly thinks that the transmission will uh, fail, right? So because uh, it is it is in the A's range and it's a exposed station problem. It is exposed station problem, right? So, in hidden station problem, wireless stations have transmission range, but not all stations are within the radio range. Like you see that it is in the transmission range of B is in the C, but the A is not there. A simple CSMA uh, will not work, carrier sensing will not work, C transmit to B, sorry, and A senses the channel, it will not hear transmission and falsely conclude A can begin the transmission. Uh, to B, right? So A senses the channel and see that the communication to the B is free because it is not within the range of the C, and it may begin transmission to B. So this is the challenge with the hidden uh, stage terminal problem, where it is shown in the figure A. On the other hand, uh, on the flip side of the, so to say, on the inverse. Uh, problem is the exposed station problem. B wants to sense to C, listens to the channel. B hears that A's transmission. B falsely assume that it cannot sense to uh, C, right? In this case, B wants to sense to C and uh, sense the channel. And uh, what it sees that it assumes that uh, hears A's transmission, and because it is in the radio range of the thing, and then it cannot sense to C. So this is a exposed station problem. Uh, so uh, we uh, so this are uh, these are being tried to handle in the wireless scenario by to as we have mean the two uh, approaches or to functions like there is one distributed coordination function or DCF uses CSMA CA CSMA with collision avoidance uh, both physical and uh, carrier uh, sensing right. So, virtual carrier sensing. So, it is it is uh, not that the we will see that how, how things are done. So, two methods are supported one where to say uh, multiple access with collision avoidance with virtual carrier sensing and one persistent carrier uh, physical carrier sensing. So, we will just see that what it uh, does. So, uh, multiple access collision avoidance or MACA for wireless uh, has to solve the hidden exposed station problem or uh, these two challenges by two type of mechanisms like one is ready to send and clear to send. So, before sending the things it says a RTS signal and waits for a CTS uh, things. So, RTS CTS helps determine who else in the range or the busy or the uh, are in the range or busy so that it can avoid collision. Now, uh, we will see that detection collision it may not be first feasible out here uh, because this uh, because this first of all noisy these channels are pretty noisy you need to have better resources and bandwidth to handle this uh, sort of uh, sensing because you are sensing and trying to transmit at the same time like. But whether still collision occurs, yes, uh, whether in spite of this collision occurs, we will see that in spite of this do may collision occurs, but nevertheless the based on that uh, CTS or RTS not receiving the channel will go for again retransmission. So, uh, if you if we look at that uh, MSCA form uh, WLAN added acknowledge and CSMA no RTS at the same time. So, this is a send a request to transmit to B and uh, in the range of A. So, B sends a CTS and responds to a CTS clear to transmission and transmit. So, it is it's really uh, does not uh, it able to handle this hidden channel both hidden channel and exposed channel uh, issues. So, uh, we have a virtual sensing with CSMA CA. Uh, like in the C in the range of A receives a RTS, right? C uh, in the range of A receives a RTS, 
and based on information in the RTS creates a virtual channel and busy nav right. So, what is a nav? So, network allocation vector the time period set by all other waiting station before sensing the medium for idleness right. So, uh, it is a it is the uh, it is the time period like if, if it is a sense a RTS for uh, B uh, then it is uh, the other stations who are hearing this will wait for will set their nav that uh, and it also in the RTS their information is there how much time it may require to transmit the data. So, for that time this uh, other stations who are hearing this uh, will wait for that and for that period before looking for the channel whether it is idle, idle or not. So, D in the range of B receives the CTS and creates a shorter nav right. So, D also in the range of B receives the CTS uh, and creates a shorter nav. The virtual implies that short station sends duration field in the data frame of the RTS and CTS. So, uh, and so that is why by reading those it is creating a wait time which is uh, and sensing after some after a after that wait time by setting their own nav. So, it is creating some sort of a virtual science channel sen sensing right. So, it is not uh, sensing uh, the channel based on this information which is the RTS and CTS. Says, uh, station then adjust their nav accordingly right. So, their network allocation vector accordingly and wait for the things right. So, let me repeat it when a when a channel wants to go a wants to send to b it sends a rts the other channels we are listening to this rts the rts also contains the information how much time it required to sense the data so uh, based on that sensing the other channels we set their uh, network allocation vector to that time period after which it will look that whether the channel is ideal or not right So, there is a another one persistent physical carrier sensing the station senses the channel when it wants to send right. So, change uh, the station senses the channel when it wants to send if ideal st station transmits right. So, station does not sense channel while transmitting. If the channel is busy station defers uh, until idle and then transmits right upon collision wait a random time using binary exponential back off. So, this is a one persistent physical sensing in uh, previously it was there it is not physically sensing, but based on the information in the RTS CTS it is setting up that after what time it will again check the idleness of the thing. But in one persistent physical uh, carrier sensing what it is doing that uh, station senses the channel when it wants to send uh, wants to send some data right. If it is idle that is uh, the station transmits. So, if it finds the station uh, station is uh, idle if the it if find the channel is idle that nobody is within that range uh, because it is a wireless channel. So, there is no wired channel and then the station does not uh, sense the channel while transmitting well, while transmitting it will not sense the channel it is go on sensing the if the channel is busy that station defers till the ideal and then transmit. So, upon collision wait for a random uh, time uh, using binary exponential back off period right. So, this is the uh, bottom line of the uh, this one persistent sensing. Now, point coordinated coordination function that uh, PCF uses a base station to pull other station to see if there are frames to be sent. So, in this in PCF in this case the it requires a base station to pull other station to see that it is a polling operation goes on if uh, they have frames to send. So, no collisions occurs per se right. So, there is no collisions occurs base station sets bacon frame periodically, periodically. So, base station can tell other station to sleep to save batteries and base station holds the frame for sleeping station right. So, it is a more uh, coordinated or point coordinated because here the base station is polling and uh, seeing that if they have frames to send no collision occur base station sends bacon frame periodically base station can tell other station to slip to save the batteries and other and base station holds the frame. So, this is the point coordinated person little bit complicated and not uh, not 
uh, it is optional for uh, things that you may not fall, but DCF is uh, is uh, comes with the mandatory for all communications with those features of uh, RTS, CTS sort of things. So, DCF PCF coexistence distributed and centralized control can coexisting using inter uh, frame spacing like uh, there are uh, three type of things one is short IFS is the time weighted between the packets on ongoing dialogue like RTS, CTS, data acknowledgement next frame. So, this is the short IFS. So, some uh, short inter time spacing and uh, PIFS, PCF IFS when no SIFS response the base station can issue a bacon or pole right. So, for that it requires a that is the PCF inter uh, frame spacing there is a DIFS that is DCF IFS when no PIFS any station can attempt to acquire the channel right. So, that is the distributed uh, or that is DC, DC, DCF IFS and there is a extended IFS or EIFS lowest priority interval used to report bad and unknown frames right. So, there is a extended IFS or EIFS which uh, which has a much lower priority and it is primarily to report uh, bad unknown frames. So, these are different uh, inter frame spacings uh, which are, are standardized which are used for this communication. So, we come back to our uh, CSMA CA. So, as we have discussed that WLAN can uh, implementing CSMA CD there are a lot of problems in case of WLAN. Collision de uh, detection requires uh, send data and receive signal at the same time requires resource full stations and higher bandwidth which is a difficult for uh, several this type of mobile devices which are uh, communicating which are not that uh, resource full both uh, in terms of application and other resources. And there are issues of hidden and exposed station problems right. So, uh, there are his uh, hidden and exposed station problems uh, which are things and in number of cases these channels are noisy sometimes the uh, devices which are communicating are far away which which creates a problem of fading. So, the signal fades off or the signal strength comes down which makes this CSMA CD to implement much difficult right. So, as we have discussed we have DIFS distributed interference space RTS request to send uh, a control frame S I uh, F short frame space C T S clears to send with this thing if we just relook at the thing. So, at the start it is a send uh, set the back off to 0 it sends the channel uh, if it is uh, not free. So, some persistent strategy is deployed. So, wait for D I F S or distributed inter frame space then the sends the uh, so, it is uh, it waits for a uh, a time period and then it sends the RTS or a uh, to request to send to its uh, destination station. After that it uh, the uh, after it sends a timer that so that it it, uh, it is looking that within that particular time period the CTS should be resolved, uh, resolved that is the clear to send signals so it should receive from the destination if it is received yes then wait for again for a short time period or SIFS and then send the frame again set a time so long this acknowledgement is not received and if it is successful if it is acknowledgement received is success. So, sense the channel wait for a persistence channel is uh, deploy a persistence strategy uh, if it is channel is busy wait for some time wait for a distributed or DIFS sends RTS wait for CTS if it is received within the time period wait for a again small period set the send the frame it is on the uh, sender to the CTS is received from the uh, destination and then it sends the frame sorry sends the frame set a timer f acknowledge is received is successful right. On the other hand if you see if there is a if there is no CTS that it does not depend with the things it may increment the back off, back off time limit, wait for the back off time and go for the things. Again if acknowledgement is also, so if the CTS is not received within the time period or acknowledgement is not received on the period, it goes for a back off time right. So, this way it goes on running. 
So, just to look at in the other perspective, so the the source waiting for a DIFS sense a RTS, waiting for a SIFS sense a the destination sense a CTS and it again waits for a CIFS sense the data or the information to the destination and this waits again for a SIFS and sends the acknowledgement. So, this is the whole process and there in that this uh, phase there is a NAV or uh, that is network allocation vector which are set by the all the other station within the sensing zone like they wait they because this RTS CTS have that thing that how much time they require to send the data. So, they have they wait for the other things before checking that whether the channel is idle or not. So, this way it handles the problem of this uh, hidden stress and exposed stress and problem. Now, whether still collision uh, is not have cannot happen or uh, type of things? Yes, it may still happen right. Uh, still happen there are this is a totally mobile uh, this is a wireless environment there are mobile devices etcetera there are noisy channels these are channels. So, though it may happen if there is a things either the things will be lost RTS acknowledgement CTS acknowledgement etcetera will be lost or corrupted. So, it is within the time period which is not reached it all goes for the back of things. So, with this uh, let us conclude our uh, overview or short discussion of this how this wireless LAN or W LAN have their uh, the phenomena works in the layer 2 or data link layer uh, infrastructure right. Again as I mentioned that the wireless LAN is a separate topic or subject altogether. Uh, maybe it requires couple of courses to handle the all aspects of wireless LAN. So, it is a basic overview of the wireless LAN uh, with respect to the data link layer that what is uh, what is uh, what uh, what are the basic consideration following the 802.11 standard. Okay. So, we will continue our discussion on this, but uh, on this overall networking topic uh, in our subsequent lecture uh, let us conclude today. Thank you.